Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I wanted to show you my Raspberry Pi powered Sinclair ZX Spectrum with HDMI out. It's also battery powered. Yesterday I posted a quick unboxing video of this unit here. It's pretty much just a Bluetooth keyboard. I had one of my buddies from the UK ship this over because they're available on the Amazon App Store in the UK for about 35 pounds. If you want to get one in the US, they're way expensive. They're like $100 to $250 for just a keyboard that looks like a ZX Spectrum. I went ahead and modified this. I put a Raspberry Pi 0W running RetroPie inside of it. As you can see, I've added an HDMI out port on here. I've also changed the status LED to a blue LED set up a new power switch, and the 5 volt DC also charges the 4000 milliamp hour LiPo battery that I have in here. So when cutting this HDMI port out, it looked really funky, so I went ahead and 3D printed a little bezel for it. I think it looks pretty good. There's some hot glue running out of the sides. I need to get a little X-Acto knife and cut the rest off. It was pretty easy to add a Pi into here. Even though it's a Bluetooth keyboard, it does support USB, so all I did was plug the USB keyboard part into the Raspberry Pi Zero using a micro USB to micro USB. Then I set it up in RetroPie. Inside of the unit, I added a power boost from Adafruit to charge the battery and power the Pi. Here's the Raspberry Pi Zero W, it's turned upside down. Power switch. Added a new LED here, HDMI adapter, I had to shave this down a lot, and the micro USB to micro USB cable. Also added this 4000 milliamp hour 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. Runtime has been really good. I've gotten about five hours of runtime out of it. The power boost will shut down the unit automatically when the battery is too low. It also charges the battery but it will work while I'm charging the battery. So it will power the Pi and charge the battery at the same time, which is a big plus. This is the PowerBoost 1000C from Adafruit. In the top of the lid, I just took the PCB that came in the recreated ZX Spectrum, turned it upside down and plugged it into my micro USB to the Pi Zero. So it is working over USB and it works inside of RetroPie really good. So now I'm just going to move over and plug everything up so you can see this thing in action. Whenever I use my monitor in any of my videos, everybody asks about it. It's a G-Chink portable monitor. It runs on 5 volts. We'll just go ahead and plug in the ZX Spectrum. Turn the power switch on. LED will light up. And RetroPie is now booting. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit because the Pi Zero takes a little while to boot. All right, we're booting into RetroPie now. The Raspberry Pi Zero W does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, so if you wanted to add more systems, you could and control them with Bluetooth controllers. But for me, I have so many systems laying around, I just wanted strictly ZX Spectrum games. I just mapped the keyboard just like a controller, so when you first start up RetroPie, it asks you to configure your controller. So I have every button except for analog sticks. That's the only thing I left out. We'll just find a game to play here. Now, one of the things I'm working on now is scraping these Sinclair games perfectly. A lot of them scraped and a lot of them didn't, as you can see. But I'll find a game to play. We'll try Jet Set Willy. Yeah, we'll go to Jet Set. I'll just press U to enter. Now, you can set this keyboard up any way you'd like. That's the way I wanted to set it up. It'll start the emulator. We need to put in the code. One, two, three, four. Press Enter and we're playing Jet Set Willy. The Pi Zero or the Pi Zero W will handle these ZX Spectrum games perfectly. If you want to add a Pi 3 in here, there probably is room for it, but I have no use for more power because they run fine on here. I have WASD set up as my movement keys, U as my action button, and it works good like this. Now, if you wanted to map it like a real ZX Spectrum, you probably could, but for me, this is perfect. To exit the emulator, all you have to do is press the two buttons you set up as start and select. For me, that's L and enter. It'll bring you back to emulation station. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I thought this was really cool because I've always wanted to get a real ZX Spectrum, but getting one in the States, it's expensive. I have to get converters and things like that. So I figured I'd do it this way. All the links that I can find for these are in the description. I'll leave links for everything I use to build this. If you're interested in doing it, if not, I completely understand. Like always, thanks for watching.